Okay, I'm Jenny Ting. I'm a Keenan Professor of Microbiology and Immunology, and I'm also the Director of the Inflammatory Disease uh, Institute at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. When I was finished with my graduate school, I decided I really wanted to combine two fields. And I was an immunologist in training, but I decided I was really interested in uh, neurobiology. And it's pretty uh, easy to go from there, a combination of immunology and neurobiology, to, to MS research. So I went to the University of South, Southern California, and there was uh, a great fit for me, because Leslie Weiner, who's a well-known uh, neurologist, and Jeff Frelinger, a very well-known immunologist, were looking for a postdoc, and I applied, and that just started um, my research in MS. And I subsequently, I, you know, decided to look at immunology in the brain, which is immunology, of course, is the, our way, the body's way of defending itself. But when it goes uh, out of control, you can have something that we call autoimmunity, which is exactly what MS is. So. I was trying to look for events that, of immunology that contributes to the onset of multiple sclerosis. Yeah, right now we're actually uh, doing uh, drug discoveries. So I'm pretty excited about that. We have a major project that's funded by the uh, National Multiple Sclerosis Society in our cooperative a center grant from MS, and uh, there's five of us who, uh, all of us are at UNC, and we have a mixture of physicians who treat MS patients as well as researchers, and uh, we have a MS cooperative research grant funded by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. And so under there, we have uh, one pathway where we are looking for um, if we can interfere with that pathway. And that pathway activates T cells. And we're pretty excited because we actually got some very positive findings uh, in animal models. So that's always a really good sign because actually when you test these things, most things don't work. And this one worked. So we're definitely on the drug discovery route. So most of my life we've been on the you know, dis um, basic science discovery pathway. And in the last few years we've moved uh, clearly to drug discovery and therapeutic discovery. So the next step, you know, of course, testing the drug will take, take us quite a few years. You know, making sure it's safe and making sure that we don't cause any other problems and that we can really test this in our model and we can see efficacy, not just in a very contrived situation where usually you, you know, treat the mice first and then go with the uh, onset of inflammation. Instead, we wanted to try the drug after inflammation has started and see if we can still see a reduction of clinical symptoms. And then, of course, moving to human cells and seeing if this can block human cells. And, you know, the rest is going to be a lot of interactions with companies and uh, so forth and people who are on the commercial end who's interested in, in um, you know, really developing this. Over 20-some years that I have been uh, a faculty here, there's been tremendous advancement in MS research. Almost every big pharmaceutical uh, now has a program in MS research, and I think that's largely due to the advocacy made by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. So there's lots of other inflammation or autoimmune diseases that haven't received such attention. So my uh, advice to a patient is, you know, don't be disheartened. There's lots of treatment protocols now. Uh, many of them have been so much better than before, and there's a lot in the pipeline. One always hopes that we can start to think about curative uh, for these very difficult diseases. Um, like I said, one can be hopeful. I don't know when that will happen. 
and I don't think anybody can say when it will happen. But there's lots of people working on this, lots of smart people working on this. Thank you.